I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the bandango? Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening me. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Tonight I'm taking a look at the Bandai SH Figure Arts Star Wars A New Hope Darth Vader version 2.0 or whatever you want to call it. Now, I originally wasn't going to order this. I feel like at this point in our 6-inch collecting days, we should have the perfect Darth Vader. And I'm not trying to be negative about it or anything, but every Vader we have has, you know, negatives to it. Now, there's some great ones. I still dig the Rogue One Moffex one, and even the second Black Series one, the 40th anniversary. Those are both fantastic Darth Vaders, but I still have to try every single one of them that comes out. So when I said I was skipping this one, I was completely lying to everybody, including myself. I finally clicked that pre-order button. Mm, I'm weak. But looking at the package, it's your standard Black, black Series. It's your standard SH Figure Arts packaging for Star Wars, especially the original trilogy. You get this silver trim all around. You get a window showing everything that's in the package. On the side, a promotional picture of Big DV. And I'm never going to call him that again. I don't know why I even went that way with it. On the back, more promotional images of the figure. Down here we have the warnings, the unreadables. Probably says something like, uh, the last Darth Vader you're ever going to need. This one's going to make everyone completely happy. Okay, some people. And maybe a few people. On this side, just the usual graphics and such. Same with the top. On the bottom, more unreadables, probably legalese, barcode, your winning lottery numbers. But I'm going to get this thing open... <laughs> And we're going to have the contest of Darth Vader's! And there we go, all out of the package. And uh, <laughs> it's not perfect, it's not terrible, it's not great, doesn't suck. I, I don't know, let's get to it. Looking at the sculpt, it's very, uh, it's smooth. How about that? Let's just go with that. It is a smooth sculpt. The details are mostly there, but when it comes to the robes that are molded in plastic on the body, it just takes away something. But on the arms, the legs, the cushiony material, the armor bits, all that's pretty sharp. I, I do like that. The proportions are great for the most part. I, it looks a little bit thin in places, but it's still got that bulky Vader look to it. We get up to the head, and I think this is what throws it off for me the most. It's definitely Vader. Yeah, it's got the helmet on top of the mask, on top of the lenses. I don't know. It looks snouty. I feel like the mouth triangle piece and then the cheekbones are really far away from the lenses almost too far. Well, there may be no almost to it. I, I feel like they're too far. And it doesn't have those silver bits that a lot of the other Vader helmets and the actual Vader helmet has to kind of distinguish the different planes. And some of the bits are lost just to the sea of blackness that is up here. I kind of like the matte look. It's growing on me. Yeah, it could be shiny, but I'm okay with this. It's just the sculpt itself bugs the hell out of me. And oh, where to start? First off, the cape. In initial pictures, I thought, oh man, that thing is bulky. That thing's going to be a pain in the ass. And it is, like a lot of wired capes. I'm not going to say it's as bad as the SH Figure Arts Dark Knight Batman, though. Dark Knight Rises, whichever one that was. That one was uh, a bit tough to get into position. This one, if you mess with it for a while, I've kind of put these bins in it here in the back. You can get it to drape pretty good, but then it has this big silver chain right here. I'm not all about 100% accuracy, but that thing just stands out. And then just looking at it, you see it, don't you? Right here, this gap they've put in the torso between the upper torso and then down to the waist. That's to increase articulation, but it looks funky. You can see it gets pretty great movement for Darth Vader, but that's because they have chunks missing out of the lower abdomen. And yeah, the blackness kind of hides it. The black cape behind the black body, behind the black robe, behind the black armor. Yeah, see what I mean? It kind of just breaks the body into two halves, which is fitting because I feel like from the waist up, articulation is fantastic, except for maybe in the neck, but that's because of the design. You get to the lower half, and we see what we see with a lot of the Darth Vader 6-inch figures. We get the traffic cone syndrome. They put a rubber robe down here, but a fabric cape. But I can't fault Bandai too much because it's the same thing Mayfix did. And the way they did this, wrapping this much around the legs, it really gets in the way of articulation. Yeah, you still have all the figure arts articulation down here, but you can't really get there, especially out 
into position. The plastic just drags the legs back into a kind of a neutral position. And yeah, it wasn't like Darth Vader was running marathons in A New Hope, but I'd like to see some action stances. One thing you have to watch when you first get it out and get used to is the depth of this socket in the torso coming out to the shoulder. That's a ball joint way deep in there with a long stick coming out to the arm. So if you're not careful, you'll put them into poses and you'll have the arm way down here. Look at that. That's insane. I understand why they made the socket that deep, but I don't know. They could have brought the sculpt up to here because there's no reason for that. That's that's kind of crazy. That's a magic trick waiting to happen. I, it, <laughs> I kind of like it just for the joke factor. And it doesn't stick out at you when you do have the arms in the up position. You can't see it unless you're out like that. But if you go all the way to the top, the arms seem almost too short. So you have to find that balance in there while also not doing that. <laughs> Why do I love that? Going over articulation, I have no clue what is going on in the neck. There's a little bit of tilt. You can't look up at all, but there is a shift forward to give you a little bit of down. Shit, I couldn't tell you what's in there. Swivel, the arm, like I said, deep ass socket. So you get back, forward, up, <laughs> down. The shoulder pad is on a hinge, so it gets out of the way. You can get the arm into position, then you put the shoulder pad back. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow comes up to about right there. Swivel hinge swivel at the wrist so you can get side to side. You swivel it around, you can end up getting up and down. Talked about the gappiness of the torso allowing for a lot of range of movement, but there's something that hinges it up and forward where you can get more crunch out of it. Without pushing down and coming straight up, you can see that it shifted forward. To put it back in the neutral position, you have to go back and down. It travels back down, you can get tilt, you get swivel, and then you get kind of a ball joint at the waist under the lower torso. And that also swivels a little bit forward, a little bit of back, not a lot of tilt. The hips are on a drop down joint. You can bring it down and then forward. So it gets most of the way there. Back out, it wants to, but the lower skirt doesn't allow it. Ah, too much stuff going on. Double joint at the knee, but I can't seem to make the top joint move a lot. Even without it moving a lot, it comes up to there. Ball joint at the ankle goes back, goes forward. You get some tilt there, and then a toe joint that goes to about right there. Vader comes with quite a few hand options. He comes with uh, two fists. He comes with two open hands uh, with the thumb kind of splayed out. He comes with a more relaxed open hand. He comes with two grip hands, and then he comes with his force choke hand for choking out them aspirations. To switch that out, it's a pop to get it off. There's a ball joint right there. Take another hand, pop it on there. I haven't had one single problem taking off the hands. He also comes with two lightsaber options. He has the hilt with the blade coming out of it, and then he has the unlit hilt. That's hard to say really fast. The hilt without the blade, there's this, it's not even a hook, this peg sticking off his waist, and then there's the shaped peg for that. So you can put it on there, but because of the shape of the peg, it doesn't rotate at all. It's just stuck up and down position just like that. And then the lit blade goes in his hand. I, not a big deal here. And because of the articulation up here, it's easy to put him in a two-handed pose too. Now for comparison, I never got the first figure arts Darth Vader. I knew from other reviews and pictures it was too small. For some reason they made him almost the same height as Luke. But here he is next to the SH Figure Arts Farm Boy Luke and you can tell that this time around they put some height into it. It's taller, it's broader, it's bulkier, it's much more in scale with the rest of the line. Here he is with the Bandai Model Kit Darth Vader. This was my number one Vader for a long, long time. The Model Kit Vader actually had a candy shell for a cape too, but I've, this is the cape from the first Black Series Vader. Here he is with the Hasbro Black Series 40th Anniversary Vader. This is it for a lot of people. I love this Vader. It's nice and articulated. It has the robe underneath. You can see that the Black Series is a little bit taller, a little bit bulkier, but it's also meant to fit in with that slightly larger scale of the Black Series. But here it is with my current number one, and that's the Mofex Rogue One Darth Vader. Yeah, it's a little bit thin in the arms. The torso kind of gets out of alignment, but I love the helmet on this thing. The red lenses, and you can almost see Anakin back there. It's a little bit taller. It's a little bit more imposing. It's a little bit more crotchy. I kind of like the new figure arts crotch a little bit better. Same problem with the plastic robes underneath. Same problem with the slight bulkiness of the cape. And then, of course, here he is with Gus. I'm telling you, boys, never trust a man that dresses all in black. He always has a lot of secrets. Of course, the same could be said about a man dressed all in white. What do I know? 
So at the end of the day, I've kind of talked myself into liking a lot of this figure, but some parts just do not do it for me. I like the base articulation. I like how much it can move. Well, I kind of wish there was more in the neck, but body-wise, uh, this is about as good as it gets. But I just can't look past the helmet just jutting out at me. And that's along with everything on the helmet being the same color. The lenses may look slightly different, but not enough to just stand out against the rest of it. But some of the detail comes out because they use the matte finish on the whole thing. See, I'm going back and forth. I'll put out a gripe, and then I'll talk myself out of it with something else that's good about it. This is what it's like to be in my brain all the time. The cape doesn't bother me at all. I figured that would be one of the... Nope, don't like it. But... It's okay. I think what's going to have to happen to the body, and I hate to do this with a $60 action figure, I think I'm going to have to rip apart the bottom. It looks like the plastic robes hanging below the belt are a separate piece from the belt. Because of that, I think there's enough gap to fit a cloth robe under there. Now on the torso, I'd have to glue it directly onto, well, either dremel it off or glue it in the same place where the robe is sculpted onto the body. And then that would travel down and cover up the trench in the abdomen. Hmm, that may be a plan, along with replacing the head somehow. But the rest of it looks good. Yeah, it could be a little bit taller, but we're talking about figure arts here. They run a little bit smaller smaller compared to Black Series, definitely compared to Moffex. As is, he's not replacing either my Rogue One Moffex or even the Black Series one. Those two just look too good integrated with the rest of the figures on my shelf, which comes from a lot of different companies. But this has potential, which is kind of stupid to say about this expensive of an action figure. I shouldn't have to do this, especially on the second try from the same company. And I'm sounding way madder than I am. <laughs> I'm really not too upset about it. I understand that if you only by SH Figure Arts, this will go in nicely. This will fit with your whole collection. But I pull from too many sources to say this fits in perfectly. Nah, it doesn't. But it's also not the worst figure I've ever owned. Mafex C-3PO burning hell. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the foosh. I feel like the perfect Vader is gonna be a mishmash of different companies' work. I say I like the Mafex best or even the Black Series, but even those aren't perfect. So yeah, with this being Figure Arts' second attempt, we're at the point where we have all the base parts we're probably going to get for a while, and now it's time to start piecing them all together.